Hi there, my name is Sandy Casella and I am with Casella Homes Real Estate and I'm here with Moline today and I'm so excited to do this uh, interview here. It's going to be really, really interesting. She's got a really great story. So we're going to talk about that in a second. I just want to set up kind of what we're doing and why we're doing these interviews. Um, so basically, um, I'll show you a little bit about this. So this is this is our newsletter that goes out. And uh, we've been sending this newsletter out for a number of years. And it basically talks about our worthy cause. Our worthy cause is uh, mental health. So every time we sell a property, we donate a portion of our commission on every home sale to CAMH, uh, Center for Addiction and Mental Health, to support mental health research. Um, and so we produced this newsletter. We have a goal of raising $15,000 for CAMH. And we produce this newsletter each month, um, and we've been sending it out for a number of years. And it, basically the whole newsletter talks about our worthy cause and asking people for referrals so that we can sell more houses. The more houses we sell, the more money we can donate. Um, but what happened is earlier this year when COVID hit, we were talking to so many clients who, um, you know, they were either downsized or they lost their jobs or they were sitting at home, uh, people who owned restaurants who were just, you know, um, things weren't going well and we we just really wanted to help more people so what we we, we were racking our brains as a team trying to try to think of how can we support more of these businesses and these local businesses because you know a lot of people buying from you know walmart was open but the little corner stores weren't and you know amazon and stuff like that so what we came up with was, you know, we could, we had a lot of people in our database and just talking to these people, we realized there was a lot of people who ran small businesses within our database. And so we, uh, we thought, you know what, we could support, we could find out what these businesses offer and we can support them. Uh, and then we took it a step further and said, you know, we could support them, but even more importantly, we could promote them. And then the more we can promote them, the more people could support them as well by shopping local. So that's where we came up with the idea of completely revamping this newsletter and basically highlighting um, small businesses within it. So every month we highlight four of the small businesses in there. Um, and then what we do is um, also give people a, web, a page on our website if they want to build that out, if they don't have a website. Um, and... So putting in the newsletter, the website, you know, we're trying to do as much as we can to support small businesses and everything that they do because we think that's so important, you know, for, it's obviously going to be a different Christmas this year, but the more, if, if you're Christmas shopping anyway, you can support a small business, that's awesome. So that's kind of where all this started. So we put it out to people in our, in our uh, database and our past clients and just said, hey, you know, we want to support you. If, if you're interested in, um, in jumping on with us, we'd love to do that. And that's how we got moving on here. Um, so, you know, we're super excited about, uh, about this initiative. It really has taken off. It's been really well received and people, you know, are so happy to do this. Um, and of course, we're so happy to do this because Basically, we're a small business as well. We're just trying, you know, trying to stay afloat as well. And um, we've been we've been blessed this year uh, with a good year. Um, however, you know, some people haven't. So the more that we can do, and we're sending out this newsletter anyway. We're producing it anyway. We're sending it out anyway. So why not give people the opportunity to be in there? So that's how we got Molly in here. So thank you so much. Um, so, Maureen, I know that I'm going to let you introduce yourself and then I'm going to ask you some questions. I know that you're a digital media expert um, or consultant, basically. So I want you to kind of explain what that is. Introduce yourself and then we can talk a little bit about um, what you do and how you can help people. Okay. So hi, everyone. As Sandy already explained, I am a digital media expert. And what that means is that I essentially help primarily small business make the transition to online, uh, especially smaller businesses that uh, were just fundamentally just brick and mortar stores that now because of COVID or just, you know, technology advancing now need to move online. So what I would help with um, would be e-commerce setup. So sitting you online with a website, sitting you in with some sales channels. So we could find out who is your, you know, your, your customer persona and how do they move online? Are they primarily on Facebook? Are they primarily on on Instagram and setting up those sales channels so you can make the most of just being online. 
And so okay. depending on your business, we could also that marketing could involve email mark could involve email marketing. It could involve influencer marketing for people with uh, products that can be reviewed by other people. And so um, a little bit of myself about myself and how I got into this. I actually started off as an intern for fashion house, Andrea Iyama. And if you're familiar with her, she was a student at McMaster. We're actually in the same graduating year. And I was so impressed by this young lady, an immigrant just like me, who had started a business that was now being fe featured in Al, now being featured in Vogue. And wow. she had um, celebrities interested in the position so i took on an internship role because i do believe like sometimes your best teachers are your friends uh and so there i learned about the basics of online branding and um just pr how to build a rapport with stylists so that they can feature your item how to build a rapport with magazines so that they can feature your item you just don't show up in vogue or out or something like that like there's a mm -hmm. process to it and so the e-commerce aspect too like i also dealt with the shipping and logistics um dealing with vendors and manufacturers and um, shipping deadlines and uh, having stuff coming over from all over from across the world what does that look like or even setting up like uh, contracts with dhl or canada post or fedex when is that the right time for your business to be looking into that so that experience was such a great teacher and it evolved to um, experiences at mcmaster university um, they too have like various and like online stores for some of their um, schools and um, the city of Hamilton, um, Alliance, Alliance Data, AKA Air Miles, because data is big right now, Yeah, how people are moving online and um, yeah, and even Sun Life Insurance. <laughs> so it's, wow. I've dibbled and dabbled in various industries, just looking at, you know, people's online experiences, how to improve it and how to, you know, um, make sure your business is catering to the right customer or client. Wow, that's fascinating. So tell me, um, so this, this alliance that you did with, with your friend there, so how did that come about? Did you just like, obviously, you were interested in what she was doing, and then did you just kind of propose? Are you, are you a graduate of MAC? Huh? Yeah, so I graduated. Oh, awesome. So, how did that come about? Did you guys, like, did you just say, I think I can help you? Like, how did that work? Because that's, that's a pretty good story in and of itself, right? That you would, yeah. you would take that step to do that. Um, so, I think we, I, I wasn't, um, I think how I found, I'm the type of person who, like, if I see somebody doing something and I want to learn, like, I'm going to, look for you and find you and um, I love that. and and basically i basically stalked her she probably won't admit that but that's what i basically did so i think initially she um we had signed an internship role and it was meant to be two days of the week i showed up every day the whole summer yeah and um, i absorbed as much as i could as much as i could yeah so yeah i love that i love that story because so many people would not do that they'd either be like too intimidated to to make that step forward or you know just think what am i going to do so i just love that story that you you know move forward like that and just went for it it's, it's such a lesson i, did. I, it's such a lesson. I did i think it's about i think um a lot of the sometimes the things that gets in your way is your pride. And I remember, like, I remember when I started working, cause she is essentially the same age as I am. And of course you have to think about this in the context of university students. So I remember thinking as I was learning so much, I remember looking at like some of our other friends and I was like, I just didn't understand how they weren't involved or weren't trying to learn from her. Yeah. But and when I asked, they were just like, it just, when I asked them like, hey, why aren't you guys involved with what she's doing? They were like, oh, I just don't feel like answering to my friend. And for me, that was never my perspective yeah. on it. I was in it to learn and absorb. And it's okay that we are the same age and you know something that I don't, like I'm, I don't look at life yeah. like that. It's like, yeah. if you have, 
I think your pride shouldn't get in the way. What a great, great, oh my goodness. Things. That's, That's a kind of attitude, attitude that you have, though, because, because a lot of people don't, right? A lot of people would be, like, like it's, it's an ego thing, thing right? right? Or whatever. whatever. So, yeah. So, so I, I think, think that's, that's amazing. amazing. Good for you. You, you have, have a really, really interesting, interesting accent. accent. Tell, Tell me about, about your accent. accent. So I'm actually from Zimbabwe. <laughs> so this season will mark nine years that I've been in Canada, but that accent won't go away. <laughs> oh my God, it's beautiful. I love your accent. It's great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It, yeah. it really helps to make people pay attention to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 what do you, so so Zimbabwe, I'm sure, totally, totally different, different climate there. So, so how, do you, how do you deal, deal with that? that? We're getting a little off track here, but I'm always curious about that from people that come from, from different climates. Um, so with me, actually, it's not even far from what we're talking uh, about, because I think what it actually helps me in my job, because I recognize with otherness so much. So when we're looking, for instance, at online personas of a business, right, I think there's sometimes details that like maybe um, this, so to speak, just like Canadians would miss that I pick up on because of my otherness. Like, for instance, I was working on a social media campaign related to um, 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 student housing. And yeah. you know, how are companies that deal or people who deal with student housing going to survive COVID? But because of my otherness, because of being an international student, I was like, hey, there's a market for people who legally have to be near the school, not necessarily local students, but international students who have to arrive in January. So right. is, you are able to survive COVID if right. you are if you are looking in that direction so i think that like yes just to say like my uh, the fact that i'm not necessarily from here the things and angles i look at um that really help and facilitate how i create campaigns i remember at the city of hamilton we would uh would also deal with like you know creating pages um for maybe immigrants coming in and small things like i remember making a suggestion that we add like foreign language translations at the top of the page because if i am an immigrant right and you land on a website um if it's all english and let's say the translations that are in your language are at the bottom of the page you yeah. might not stay long enough on that web page to get right. that information so by moving those translations up above you're more encouraged to keep visiting not only that web page, but the rest of the website. So things oh, yeah. like that actually yeah. help me because I of my otherness. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's, yeah, yeah, I love that. So so, so you're, you're saying, saying your otherness. otherness. Your otherness. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's what I call it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a little bit about, I guess, I guess about, about your story, story of, of like coming, coming here from Zimbabwe. Did you come, come as a student? student? I did come as a student. I came, I remember I was like 18 and it was such an intimidating process. Did you come by yourself? I did. I have to tell you that I am so, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you here, but I have to tell this story. So I am so fascinated by people who do that and I, I have been for a long time. So. I've been selling real estate for 31 years and I've had a lot of clients that have come from other countries, um, Poland, Serbia, Pakistan, India, like, and it's always fascinated me um, in, to the point that, so I'm, I'm writing a book right now, it's a mental health book, but I, I just talked to my publisher and said, after I finish this one, I want to write one about people who come from other countries because I don't know that I could do that. I find that so fascinating. Like, like, young people like yourself coming here and like so much culture shock and everything and you know young like I, I talked to a lot of like they were young families and that they would move here and the, I remember I had one client and she said I couldn't speak the language I had little kids I was taking them to the doctor because they were sick and I couldn't communicate with the doctor and how do you like just to get through that I think is fascinating so I'm so I'm sorry to interrupt you because I, but I love that story so tell me a bit about coming here like at that age by yourself and like you're still here and thriving obviously like you have such a great mindset um i think honestly it still is one of the hardest things that i am doing because i think i'm yeah. still doing it um 
But I think that one of the things I feel like I am so thankful, so thankful that I landed in Canada because some of the people that I went to high school with landed in other countries that are not so immigrant friendly. Canada is so immigrant friendly and just I was so shocked at like the extent to which people want to just help you randomly. And yeah. that was not the experience of some of my friends who went to the United States or some of my friends who went to England. So if anything, I I I have a theory that it's all to do with the weather, that the first people in Canada just were forced to be nice because of the weather. I don't think if you're a mean person, you could survive yeah. in Canada. It just the weather doesn't permit it. It that doesn't permit you to be a horrible person. That's how it happens because it helps you, right? Because, because that's how you survive. Yeah. And so that has been the experience. And I think I'm still um I'm still learning, but like you know what I'm finding? I'm finding that when I go home. I feel too Canadian to be home. But sometimes when I'm here, I feel yes, too yes. to actually fit I in. Hope, yeah. like, I totally get that. You know what? My, 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 um, my, my, my kid's dad, dad is from Uruguay, and he, he kind of says the same thing. thing. He, he came here younger than you, like, as a teen, and it's kind of like, you know, you're always pining for home, but it's a little bit different. So when you're there, you feel a little off. But here you feel a little off. But I think, you know what, I think that, my theory is that you meet so many nice people because you are obviously just such a nice person. And it's, your, it's what you're putting out there. You're getting the same thing back. It's all your perspective, right? So um, you, you have obviously like a very warm personality. So you attract people like that. But I, I do I do believe that's true, though, that people here will help you. Like I was in, I was in another country uh, earlier this year before COVID um, with my daughter who was doing a, um, who was doing a, we call it her last semester there or her co-op there and that's what we found was you know it was clear to some people that we were foreigners but they weren't very warm and helping like and i i just thought well that's weird because i know i know for a fact in canada when people like when people see that they will help you they'll say they 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 they'll just help you so i i totally agree with you that 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 is the case but um so what what brought you here like why canada was it the program was it the school what brought you here i it was the program and um yeah the school so i obviously had gotten into mcmaster and I had gotten into universities in England as well. But I think when my parents and I looked at the pricing, it just for the quality of education I would receive at McMaster versus the universities I got into in England, it was just better that I come to Canada. Yeah. And at the time, my mom had a brother who was here who has since moved. And so he was in Alberta. And so my parents had rationalized that should anything happen? And this is us not understanding how big Canada oh, is. Say, like, yeah. Oh, you know, he's in our bird. He can come down and it's like, no, <laughs> that's not how Canada works. He can't just yeah. come down. Yeah, oh my God, that's great. That's great, but I could totally, I could totally see myself thinking that and like being in another country and not realizing like it's such a massive country, right? So, it's a massive story. country. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, that really was also like our rationalization. Yeah, yeah. Well, whatever. If that gave them comfort, if that gave them comfort, because I know it's how hard that is, if that gave them the comfort to, to, to like go and like kudos to them for letting you do that, right? It's a... Uh, it's, it's it's amazing. amazing. That's, That's a great story. story. But I will I will, I will say, say that Canada's the better to have you. So I'm happy that you came here instead of England for sure. I so it's amazing. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> happy. So, 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 okay, okay, so I cut you off here, but let's let's get back, back to that story. But um, so, so tell me a little, little bit about so you, you went, went to McMaster, um, and then what are you doing now? Like how did you morph into into what you're doing right now? So I would say maybe the digital media bug, if it didn't, it hit me. I think what happened was I had two consecutive roles in communications. So I was working for Andrea Yama, the fashion house, and I was also working for Matthew Green on his first campaign as Chancellor okay. in Hamilton. And there I was doing the social media for um, just um, 
for a student initiatives that he was having. And so I was like, hey, like this is such an interesting way to communicate with people. And that was around about the time where like, I think also Facebook was just, and the social media was transitioning from something that just young people do to something that, that like collectively as yeah. the world community, we come and we join in this space. So that's where I started off. And then um, I took on various roles at McMaster. And I find that like working simultaneous roles, um, it gave me experience to just um, understand how to speak to various audiences. So the way you speak to, for instance, people who go on a tertiary website is so different from people who are on a fashion website. It's so different from people who are looking for information about politics and just getting that voice correctly is um is such an important thing to master in just like branding and online um just like websites oh yeah that's, that's, that's a good point, point. Yeah. yeah keep, keep on, on sorry, sorry. yeah, on. yeah. <laughs> no, that's fine and then um i think also that because I'm such a busy body. I think it just made more sense for me to go at it on my own in the sense that um, I, started, I started taking some clients, um, doing some graphic design work, so some infographic work. So distilling, like, for instance, you have a real estate company, distilling, like, maybe your numbers into, like, a very nice graphic that could also be, like, your marketing, but also tell the story of you of your business life in the last year so I learned a little bit of that like I just kept on trying to learn taking on while simultaneously doing my degree taking on courses at George Brown to help with like my coding to help with my visualization of data to help with my analytics and then that education opened up roles at the city of Hamilton where I worked on um initiatives with the engagement uh, officer as well as um, yeah, yeah. other projects yeah that's uh, that's, uh, that's pretty, pretty interesting, interesting but you sound, sound to me you sound, sound like a lifelong learner like you just like to learn stuff and try <laughs> things, right? yeah, yeah totally but, but it's, it's obviously, obviously it's obviously a passion of yours like you truly enjoy what you do yeah. don't you it's pretty, it's pretty clear, clear. I do, I do. And I think almost like, I think learning is such a passion for me that like, I sometimes wish there was a way to just human download information, just get it in there somehow, somewhere and just know yeah. how to extrapolate it. Like, I think that's the one thing that like, I am passionate for. If I could curate like a passion media, digital media product, it would be the ability for people to just get information, the right yeah. information, accurate information in their head. Yeah, I read, what was it, a, I, I read a book recently, I'm trying to remember which one it was, um, and then we're talking about that, how it's all like, it's always a learning process, like, I, I'm, I'm on, I've heard this saying a little while ago, go, go as far as you can see and then you'll be able to see farther, and I, it just, it just keeps resonating so much with me, and, and that's basically what it is, like, it's like driving a car in fog, you can only see so far, but every time you get to that next step, you can see farther, so, and I've really learned that, just one step leads to another, so you do one thing, and then it, you know, leads you to something here, leads you to something here, and takes you down all these different paths, and you end up where you should be, by that, it sounds like that's what you're doing, but when you say, like, all this information, you can't, like, you just can't, pile all this information into a person because you just can't put it all in at once. It has yes. to be, unfortunately, has to be that step. Yeah, but it's the right. Right. You don't only see things that can do that, right? You know, yeah. like, can you do that learning and stuff? So yeah. uh, that's, that's, that's fascinating. It's fascinating to me, but I, 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 love, I love your, um, I love that because I consider myself a lifelong learner. Yeah, I think I keep learning all the time. I think it's, I think it's so important, right? You're never too old to learn something. And, and I, I learned so much from people, people who are younger than me. Like, like I, I love, love it because because, because that, that passion that drives you know really something. But um, tell, tell me a little bit about, about your. Let's, let's talk, talk a little bit about your business and <laughs> what you do, what you can, can offer to people. Um, I, I love, love it because, because it's you know you're helping you know kind of along the lines of what we're trying to do is just help other small businesses and help everybody kind of grow and succeed and you know, get to where they want to get. So tell us a little bit about how you would help them, what, you know, what, what you, you go, go ahead, ahead, I'll let you just go ahead and 
Okay. <laughs> so basically, we would, I would, I'm just going to speak as if, you know, it's a business coming into our offices. And so we would just sit up and find out what it is that you, you know, what kind of product you have or what kind of business you are. And we would start by trying to plan out um, web, a website primarily because that's primarily what we do so whether that's an e-commerce site or just a service site where like it builds on it it uh, allows you to build leads we would do that and then we would um, facilitate the marketing to ensure that you you're building revenue so, okay. so that could be social media marketing Facebook ads Instagram ads or that could be um, email marketing so um, or influencer marketing, depending on your business. I think one of the things that's very important is um, to understand what is your niche and not try to do so much. So I try to help my clients zone in on what is your specialty because that's what we that's what we're going to master. We're not going to try to catch all the fish. We're going to catch your yeah. fish. And we're going to try to catch well. Yeah, based on all the online platforms. So. Um, we can create like a marketing campaign that's transferable. So in that instance, I mean, we create a video that can be shown as a YouTube ad, but also like if somebody closes YouTube and just goes to their Gmail, it's gonna show up as a Gmail strip marketing your your com your brand or your company. And yeah. then they might just open an email from you as well. So it's just making sure that the online experience or your brand is seamless and you're zoning in to your desired customer okay so so um sort of like the the, the media market mm -hmm. act right you want to yeah. the best mess putting the best message out there to the wrong market is not going to help you it's you not gonna zone in, in like you have to have the right you have to have the right media the right message to the right media Right. Yeah. In the right yeah. way. Most in of the right way. way. Yeah. You have yeah. to have it in the right way, because I think that the intimidating thing about online marketing and like I feel like when you have a brick and mortar store, like people just come in. Right. Yeah. In the store and some people get it like you don't actually have to focus on that actual client. But online, you can focus on the person who's most likely to buy, you know. OK. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I get it. And, that's what makes online so fascinating. Just um, the fact that it's so focused on exactly what you want as opposed to just like anyone. Right. Okay. So yeah. like I'm a, I'm a shoe store in a mall. I have no idea who's going to walk in. You don't know who's going to walk in. It could be somebody who was coming in to go to the dollar store and they walk by the shoe store. Although I have to say like I, I do that all the time and then I buy shoes, but that's my, that's yeah. my thing. But, um, but, uh, but let's just, so that's kind of what you're talking about. Like you yeah. have no idea who's coming to the mall, what they're coming for and why they're coming yeah. into your store. Whereas on social media, you can target market to yeah. people who are more likely to want that product. Exactly. Right? Okay. Yeah. So for instance, your ads would show up to somebody who Googled yesterday, the best use to give for a gift. Okay. So making sure that your website and, you know, your ads are targeted for for people who are already looking for shoes. Right, okay. opposed to just walking through the mall, so to speak. Yeah, yeah I get it. That makes, that makes sense, yeah. Um, so what, what would make your business or your services different than other companies who do the same thing? I think my approach is more holistic simply because I know the entire, um, I just know the e-commerce industry from various angles, like from tertiary institutions like McMaster universities, from government institutions like City of Hamilton, from data institutions like Loyalty One Air Miles, or from insurance institu institutions like Sun Life. These are all clients or in industries that I've worked in. So I know what holistically e-commerce looks like from various um, platforms too and i also think for me in a sense like when you spoke about helping people one of the things it's just like i'm not afraid to you know hold my client's hand through the process because sometimes you have a bright idea but you don't 
know how to execute it or you're unclear about certain things. And I'm not afraid to say, okay, like I'm not afraid to help you through the entire process and see you, okay. you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that I think fun. that's what stops people from, you know, going online and starting e-commerce businesses, right? It's like an intimidating process. It's like they decide that, oh, I don't know how to code. And then that's it. They're just going to leave it. It's like, no, we're not with me. We're not going to leave it. We're going to find a solution and we're going to push you through. You know, yeah. and I think it's more important now more than ever because this pandemic has really shown how digital media is essentially pandemic proof. Like all you right. need to go online is a cell phone from even 2007 and the free Wi-Fi from even riding on the bus or just mm -hmm. going to your local Starbucks. Online is pandemic proof. So yeah. you need to be online. Yeah. We're going to chat after this, you and I. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can help us. Um, anyway, yeah, that's you, you're giving me some ideas, but I love your, I love your like, you, you've got a very wide range of, of like platforms, I guess, for lack of a better word, that you've worked with or worked in. So you have a wide range of kind of the client base out there, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you've worked with big companies, small companies, and that's kind of, that's really interesting. So, yeah. You know that like the whole angle fashion yeah. the city like even that like juxtaposition is really cool to me so yeah that's pretty good what would you what advice would you give someone who's thinking of moving their business online um i would say um i would say be clear about i think i mentioned it earlier be clear about Online, you have to be clear about who your customer is. I would say you need to be clear about that before you even move online because you can waste a lot of digital marketing money just promoting to everyone. You can waste a lot of digital marketing money creating a website that is not even focused on that client that you want. Like I think that it has to be clear from when somebody lands on your website that um, it's for them. It's geared for them. You know what I mean? I so I think that I would say before you even have a meeting with somebody who's in digital media or like a web designer, find that out for yourself. That's a huge point. Yeah. You know what? I, I, you're right about that. You want to know who your target market is before you even go out there because you don't want to be like, you could really go down a rabbit hole, right? Like, and I think that's a big problem that people had um, when websites first became a thing is that people get a website and be like, okay, well, like nobody's on my website, but you have to drive people to that website and then you have to be driving the right people to that website because you can't be all things to all people. You have to know who your target market is and then be able to and then be able to get your, your product out to that yeah, target yeah. market. So, yeah. Well, that's, that's, yeah, I like that. That's good advice. Um, where, where are you hoping that this business will take you? Where do you see it going? Um, what, are you, what are you hoping to to do in the future. You're going to do bright things in the future. <laughs> you're going to do bright things. I know that. But what, um, right now, what do you see, um, what do you see happening and where are you hoping to go with it? Um, I think for myself, um, I think I want to take on more clients. One of the things that, um, I think one of the things that I've kind of established right now, and you kind of mentioned it, is just um, that I have big client clients and I have small clients. And I want to keep facilitating um, avenues for my smaller clients. I do think that, like, you know, just going back to my bigger picture, where it's just like, I was a small fish in Canada, but people really helped me out. And I never want, you know, my business or my company to be like, oh, we only do with the big people. I always want us to have an avenue for your average mom and pops to make it online. Awesome. And I think that as we grow, that's really what I hope for, that as we take on all these major clients, we still create rooms and avenue for everybody else to make it online because there's no bigger financial democracy than being online it's the great yeah. equalizer right in right. terms of like being able to make money on it it's the great equalizer and everybody should be allowed the opportunity to succeed on it yeah are you are you a reader do you read i do read a lot yeah i, I can tell just by your yeah and plus you know just the things you say and stuff you're um 
you know, I love, I love thinking that, you know, there's a lot of, well, I'm a big cliche person, but you know, um, just when you get somewhere and you've been afforded an opportunity, you really do need to turn around and help the people behind you and help them up as well. I think that's super important. And that's obviously something that you believe in. You can tell us by the way you talk. Um, and, you know, to who much is given, much is expected, right? So you, you have to, you know, you have to. I think your your personality, obviously, and your way of thinking has got you this far in life. It's, that's pretty clear. But you also have a very giving um, personality that you like to help people. So I think I think that's amazing. Like our our team is very much like that. I mean, we hire around that. You have to, you know, you have to believe that helping other people is your responsibility. We're all put on this earth to serve others. Mm -hmm. And the more you help, you know, if you help enough people get what they want, you'll get what you want. So I, I just, I absolutely love what you're doing. Um, absolutely love it. So if there are companies out there or anybody out there that, that, um, wants to get more information and just see if maybe you can help them, how would they get in touch with you? So the best place to reach me is through my website, and it's just simple. It's my first and last name, morganmakumboringa.com, okay. and that's the best way to just put in your details, and we will reach you within two business days and set up a consultation and hear your story. I'm all about, you know, like, you asked me, what's your story? I yeah. that's literally the first question, what's your story? Because I think that should be part about part of your pitch online yes. is your story. Yes, because everybody has a story, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what, what, what's your favorite, um, do you have a favorite type of business you like to work with or is it more the person you're working with? What's kind of, what kind of like moves you in that way? Um, I love working. I think maybe it's more personal. I do love like working with like uh, new Canadians. Um, I think it's maybe because I, I was at one point in time a new Canadian. And so like I can recognize with that, you know, I can recognize with wanting to start afresh and wanting to build something in this country. So I always love that. I love uh, when they come in and they like have an idea and they're fresh eyed and they're willing to put, you know, a lot of like their hard earned money into the idea. I just, I, I want to put all my energy into making sure that they succeed because I, I just, I can recognize what I can recognize with immigrants. I know what it takes to land in this country and to start a life like emotionally, mentally, what it takes from the families. So I, I have a heart for it. Yeah, <laughs> heart for it. Yeah. Let me help you, please. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's amazing, amazing that you can just do something that you're so passionate about and you know yeah. make a living at it because yeah. it's beyond. We're all here to make a living, right? Mm -hmm. um, so do you still have family back in Zimbabwe? I do, I do. Yeah. So uh, my mom and dad are still there. I don't think they'll ever move. I'm trying to yeah. get them. They they're stuck. Yeah. <laughs> they they don't want to they don't want to move at all. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, yeah, but my sister's now here. She goes to Ryerson, so she's oh. also on her own journey through Canada as well. She's a new. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that's amazing, but nice that you have your sister here. So, uh, do you go back? Like, I, do back? Go back. I do yeah. go back. I do go back um, at least once every two years, which is not much, but it's still. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And I think for me also, it's just also like, I think one of, when I think about going back, the next time I want to go back, I want to see if I can create opportunities for people back home as well. Like, I want to see if I can set up, like, something educational for people. Yeah. Because, again, like I said, I just really believe online is a great equalizer it doesn't matter where you are i think that's what COVID to has told us people can get things done online no matter where you absolutely. are absolutely so true. i think that's my next goal i keep thinking my next goal should be setting up some kind of edu online education thing to yeah. either help people start their businesses online or something just i think it's important to me that's, that's a great, great idea. idea. Actually, that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. So tell me something about Zimbabwe, maybe, that most people don't know. Something about Zimbabwe yeah. that may... Yeah. I think one of the things that about Zimbabwe, I mean, I, not necessarily about Zimbabwe, but like Zimbabweans is just, they are probably the most tenacious people you will ever meet. And, and well, they- what could you do? 
Yeah, <laughs> very tenacious and malleable because yeah. they've been, I think Zimbabwe is possibly like in the top 20 of the worst economies in the world and wow. all things being equal, like I shouldn't be here, but my parents managed to get me through school here and stuff. And I, and wow. I think that's due to the tenacity and maybe that's why I'm a hard worker. I know I don't come into the room, into a meeting by myself. I come in with my parents and their hard work and their oh grandparents and their hard work. So I carry that, I carry that true, really and truly in my heart in all the things that I pursue that it took a lot to get me here and I have to yeah. act like it. Oh, oh my goodness, goodness. that's uh, like, like you're just melting my heart here, but you're so you're so right, you know. There's other people who will say, you know, if I if I succeeded, it's because I'm standing on the shoulders of giants. So the yeah. fact that you know you, you say I'm not coming into the room by myself, I'm coming with my parents. So I'm sure they're super proud of you. And I I, I think I think what you want to do with um you know with the whole thing about helping people in Zimbabwe, maybe I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Like and you, you, you're going to do that for sure. I just, you know, it's obvious that you're going to do something like that. And I think that's incredible. So, um, yeah, so I, I think it's, I mean, I, I thank you so much. Like I get so much out of these and learning from people. Um, I can't tell you how much it warms my heart to talk to people who, you know, think the way you think and, um, do what you do. So it's, it's such a, it's such an honor for me. And I'm, you know, in talking to small businesses this year and, and the way we've gone with this newsletter, I'm so happy. Like, I, I just can't even, I, I love doing this. And I think it's great to get all these stories out there because there's so much, there's so many ways that we're all connected and that we can help each other. Um, it's incredible, you know, to learn somebody's story and be able to kind of, you know, work with them, I think is, I think is great. And I've got to learn so many people's stories through this and just with helping people buy and sell houses. And, you know, everybody has a story. Everybody has a story. And to learn about these families that we help and what it means for them to get into a house and what it means for them to be able to uh, provide stability for their family is incredible to me. And I think a lot of that is the same thing that you're doing, is to be able to help somebody with their business and help them grow that business um, so that they can provide for their families and, you know, yeah do what they need to do because I think a lot of people were making at some point, you know, at first you're making money for yourself, but at some point when you get enough money, you have to have another reason that drives you. You have to have something else that gets you up in the morning because paying your bills is not enough. When you have, when you have enough to pay your bills, you have enough to pay your bills, but when you can get up and then help other people, that's a whole different level. And that's, that's so, it's such a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled that you that you were able to get on here with me and talk about your story because it's incredible. Um, I do want to talk to you a little bit more after this. Maybe we can do some stuff together. But um, I have some ideas going through my head too, as well as where we can, you know, kind of um, help some other companies maybe just even connect it. Because I think even if I could just connect people, yeah. you know, that's all. That that would be that would be enough if we can do some of that. So. Mm -hmm. um, that's great. So I'll, I'll just, we're going to wrap this up because I've kept you on here long enough, but I do want to let people know. So every, every month, if you're on here and you have a small business that you want to promote, reach out, out to us at casellapromotions at gmail.com. Um, and we will get in touch with you and, you know, get you in our newsletter and do, do more of these videos with people. Um, next week we, we have them again. So, um, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday afternoons, we do these live videos, but they'll continue to go live and we'll share this with you. Um, and, and I'm just super thrilled that you got on here. You have such a great story, such a beautiful soul. It's amazing to me. So <laughs> I will, um, I'm going to let you go. I'll let you get off this call and get back to doing what you're doing. And uh, our, our, our paths are definitely going to cross for sure. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much, Colleen. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>